Hi, let me take five minutes out of your busy agenda to inform you about a crucial but underused method in .NET. Configure await. If you know how the await keyword works, you know that the code which follows the await keyword is basically a continuation task. This is also the task usually returned by the asynchronous method. And this part right here just runs synchronously on, for example, the UI thread. Now the async method being called here will most likely run on another thread. A question that arises is, where does this continuation task run? On the original thread, in our case the UI thread, or on the background thread? So this is where configure await comes in. It only has one boolean called continue on captured context. If set to true, the code following the async call will simply run on the same thread as the code before the await statement. If set to false, however, the code will simply continue on, well, whatever thread was being used for the background task, probably a worker thread. Now, there's this guideline that states that UI developers should set this boolean to true, while library developers should set this to false. Let's first take a look at the UI code. As you can see, the code following the await keyword updates the UI. Let's see what happens if we set continue on capture context to false. That's right, a big fat exception. Your UI elements can only be updated from the same context that created these elements. Let's set it to true, or you know, let's not set it at all, because true is the default value. And ta-da, the UI update happens on the main thread and works just fine. Okay, so that makes sense. But why do we have to set this to false in our library code? Well, as a rule of thumb, you don't meddle with threading in your library code. You don't know where or how your code will be used. You just want to provide code that works well everywhere, no matter the circumstances. Let's take a close look at the asynchronous method we've been using. It is a simple wrapper around task.delay to simulate something async. Also, there's some code before and after that call. Let's remove the configure await and do something evil in our UI project. Let's remove the await keyword and wait in a synchronous fashion instead. Now, generally, this should be avoided as it blocks the current thread. But sometimes you don't have a choice. For example, child actions in ASP.NET MVC, well, they cannot be asynchronous. Let's run this code. And... Nothing happens. We are stuck. Somehow we ended up in a deadlock situation where the UI thread is waiting for itself. Let me explain. When the button is clicked, the UI thread calls the button click method and then goes into the do work async method. All this code is executed synchronously until we arrive at task.delay. The method returns the rest of the code as a continuation task and returns to the button click method. There, the UI thread blocks until the continuation task has finished. After a short delay, the code following task.delay wants to execute. But it can't. Remember, it tries to get back on the same context where it was before the async call. Which is the UI thread. Which is currently blocked in the button click method. And there we have it. A deadlock. Adding configure await with continue on capture context set to false will avoid going back to the UI thread. Thus, executing correctly, whether do work async is waited for synchronously or asynchronously, it will always work. Just to be very clear, specifying false on this await has no impact whatsoever on the await statement in the button click method. This one can just resume on the UI thread. All right. So I hope you understand what the role is of configure await and why we have that distinction between UI code and library code. Thank you for joining. You can read our blogs, follow us on Twitter or on Facebook.